pen. I just made this discovery. I bought it last night. I felt like I was taking a risk. And for me, it's a new discovery. But for you, I don't know. You kind of... You live on the edge of Coke products. I had the real Coke version at Wendy's a couple of weeks ago. And it blew my mind. But I felt guilty because it was... Uh, you know, real sugar coke and I don't even know if I mentioned it to you and then last night at Stop and Shop they had it in diet form and what I'm talking about is lime diet coke which also exists as lime coke oh my god the lime is subtle it's good it's as if you squeezed a lime in your soda. It's giving me such pleasure right now. It doesn't even quite taste like diet soda. Like if we were doing the, the, the Coke uh, challenge, it would throw me off. And yet, as you you don't feel like you're coated in sugar. It's just like the best of both worlds. <clears throat> so, um, I, uh, um, okay, so, so, Carolyn, stuff is not huge, but it pissed me off. Okay, so, um, I don't, uh, really often check in with Paul about her like oh did it hurt anything like I it's like weird it's like I'm not thinking about it that much like when he comes home from work or um whatever uh it's like yeah like sincerely not on my mind and I think the other I I think I was just like PMSing or having my period or something or I don't know what. Just she was on my mind and I felt nosy and he got home from work and uh, I was like heard you know been talking to Caroline lately and he was like oh no I was like huh she not been around or uh, busy like what's going on. And he's like, oh, wait, yeah, she did say something I saw her a couple of days ago. I was like, oh. And he's like, yeah, she, um, bought, you know, he is, he's like, he doesn't care. And, it, you know, his slow delivery, he's like, uh, uh, she, she bought a, uh, a paddle boat. And for some reason, it pissed me off really bad. And I was like, you know what you are? I was like, you're her information mule. She wasn't telling you about her paddle boat. She was telling me. And she doesn't seem to realize that you're like, not really behaving as her mule. Because you weren't going to tell me this if I hadn't asked. You didn't even tell me about this. She bought a house. And it's fine. Actually, that's totally fine. I feel like it's healthy for me. Um, I feel like I would be more continually upset if you came home and was like, so, she bought, you know, like, she bought this, or she got that, or she's doing this. Um, that would really, uh, get to me more. So, uh, I prefer it to be like, when I get, you know, I bug up my butt to, like, know something. And those times where, like, he has absolutely nothing to say, I do feel disappointed and, like, irritated but um yeah I like that um don't ask don't tell don't ask don't tell he'll tell me if I ask but if I don't ask he won't tell me so um so I was like you're, you're a mule I wasn't mad at that point or yeah I was just like a little exasperated like a little lol and then um uh, but then it kind of like was marinating in my brain a little bit and I uh, 
Oh, so we've been talking about how shallow she is and, and therapy and stuff and, uh, you know, talking about, like, does she even deserve to have some kind of letter, some kind of information given to her about why this is happening when she is shown so little curiosity. And this, it's like, I've been contemplating the letter, like, how could it be succinct yet really make an impact and be truthful and, um... Uh, um, excuse me. Lime day, coke, babe. Okay. Like, how to succinctly convey to her the depth of, um, the damage that she's caused me. Not necessarily to blame all my problems or my mental illness on her, but to show her her enormous contribution to it and to condemn her for uh, putting herself on a pedestal and me down below as a mental patient and all that. Um, like, she did things to me and now uh, pities me or whatever it is. Okay. So, been, you know, all summer, I've been like, how can I do that? And, like, just lay it out, blah, blah, blah. Now, ever since, it was like, call me, I need to talk to you. And my response was, I don't want to talk on the phone, but you'll hear from me when I'm ready. And the response is, did Paul tell you I'm closing on the house next week? Uh, fucking, and that also, it was like a OMG, LOL, <laughs> WTF. I recall laughing about it, but it's been, and I still can laugh about it, like, it's fucking ridiculous, but, um, it's been sinking in, like, in a way that, um, with you and my therapist, I'm like, why would I bother to try to communicate with her on a deeper level, a more serious level, when this is what, this is what she is, like, she just showed what she is. Why hasn't she shown any, like, urgent, urgent curiosity about what's going on? Like, they've been a little like, I miss you, or, you know, I, like, I think she has some feelings, but, um, be like, please, please tell me, what have I done? What, like, just please communicate me with me. I need to understand that kind of thing. Zero, nothing. Also, how about my house? Okay, so, so the other day, it's the um, paddle boat, and Paul tells me, and I'm like, oh, whatever, like, and then we're sitting in the kitchen, and I'm like, all of a sudden, I'm like, fuck her paddle boat. I was like, Paul, I was like, do you feel, do you know what's wrong with her telling you, and obviously meant to tell, to tell me about her paddle boat I don't give a fuck about her paddle boat why is she talking about her paddle boat why it's just another acquisition to talk about I got a paddle boat it, it, it makes me ill and he was like well clearly it's a signal that she wants you and Poppy Poppy to have fun in her paddle boat so I was like Okay, like, yes, that is her way. And a few texts ago, she was like, oh, about the house. She was like, I look forward to seeing you and Poppy and your family, or Poppy and her family, whatever, at my house. And when she said that, in my mind, I was like, when hell freezes over, I'm not going. I'm not going this summer. I don't know what will be happening in a year, but... um. So I was like, okay, that is her way. He's right. So I'm like, yeah. But again, it's such a dumb communication. Okay, I am sure she's like super excited about her house and all that. It's a big deal. Buying a house is a big deal. And uh, with a lake and a paddle boat. Why not reach out to me and be like, please talk to me. 
I just made like a huge um, decision about a house and uh, it was a lake and I really want to share that with you and I miss you so much and I still don't really understand why you're not speaking to me and if only I could know then maybe I could uh, make amends or uh, you know just please tell me you know I just remembered earlier when it happened she was like uh, tell me what's wrong um, I'll do what I can I'll go to therapy she did say that she did and at the time, it gave me the willies, like, ugh, gross, I don't want to go to therapy with you, like, ugh. And I guess she said those words. But this, I, I feel like it rang hollow. I feel like all these months, even if she, okay, she did say that, but there's it's hollow. There's something not there, there, like, God, and then it's like, am I wrong? Like, am I wrong? My therapist was like, she loves you, you love her, but um, there's so much damage and it's really up to you how you want to handle this damage. The damage is real. Um, I think you've come a long way in, uh, you know, when we first started talking about this, you were like, um, we're really good friends, but we have some problems. And now you're more like, we have problems and we're, we were once really good friends. like. Like, I, I'm changing, and, um, I can't, okay, there, is there still a part of me where it feels bizarre to be completely out of communication, um, with her? She's been huge in my life, but I also don't care. It feels like a relief, and it's, am I, like, stunted in some way, like, like not stunted with like some kind of denial, a wall, where I'm not feeling, where I should be feeling. And um, I said to therapist, I was like, because once at some point she had mentioned a grieving process over this. And I was like, I don't feel like I'm in a grieving process. I kind of feel like uh, nothing or angry and occasionally a little sentimental. I remember sometimes she was said something very funny or we had fun. And that's like kind of like a distant feeling, like, oh, yeah, yeah. But I'm not, the only time was that spider costume, which gave me like a sad, like, want to cry feeling because it was like a memory of her being childlike and fun and, and uh, having a lot of spirit, willing to get into the spirit of things. I mean, she has that. She's always had that. And that's something that I like about her. And um, I'm not exactly missing her, though, because her lifestyle sucks for me. I mean, I think her lifestyle sucks. She's so caught up in, um, she's changed. I mean, she was always her, but now she's like turbo her and gone are the more, uh, comforting, subtle, um, mellow. She's not mellow anymore. It's like, she's slow. She, been a workaholic for a long time and now it's like frantic things with McCarthy Beast and frantic acquisitions it seems like I mean she, I'm sure she's done buying real estate but um, I just uh, frantic trying of restaurants frantic this there's it, like a it's like a not um, enjoyable pace and I feel the crap more from her and um, she, oh my god therapist told me that I had depersonalization um, uh, last time I saw her and we were crossing the street and I had, it was our light. I probably mentioned this and like, I stopped and like everything became really blurry all around me and I couldn't move and Paul had to take me across the street and it was because it was after we went to this maniacal haircut, everything was maniacal in Manhattan. Blah, blah, blah. Carol Ann was like, let's, let's, we have to get to this. We got to do that. that, that. I snapped, and there's another, oh shit, man, do I have to do another, it's 14, I, I'm gonna have to do another one, I don't know how you feel about this, okay, bye.